A former VA police dispatcher who accused a superior officer of sexually assaulting her says that she wants closure. And she's asking the federal government to hurry up and give it to her. It's been two and a half years since the woman filed an EEO complaint and more than a year since she filed an appeal. It's taking so long, the man she accused has already taken retirement from the Atlanta VA. She told Fox 5 I team reporter Johnny Edwards she's hoping for validation or at the very least a chance to move on. Shanika Jackson has told us before what the former deputy police chief allegedly did to her, groping her, exposing himself to her. She says she still lives with depression and panic attacks. And while he took his federal retirement and can't be disciplined, she's still dealing with an open federal case. Shanika Jackson says she hasn't been the same since what happened to her in late 2021. Because I'm a person that worries a lot, um, I have nightmares about things that have occurred to me, specifically this incident that occurred, the sexual assault. Now she's asking the federal agency that enforces job discrimination and harassment laws to let it be over. I'm just asking um, that they finish the process. She's told her story before, both to investigators with Veterans Affairs and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. How this man, former Atlanta VA Deputy Chief of Police Johnny McCuller, feigned interest in her career and helped her get a job. But then one day, alone with her in his office, allegedly closing the door, exposing himself and groping her, allegedly telling her, I told you it would cost you. All of which he denied in a meeting with the VA's EEO investigators. Once an outgoing, career-minded mother of three, now Jackson says she barely leaves her house. I still suffer through daily panic attacks, anxiety. I'm unable to have relationships. Um, I don't trust men, so to speak, anymore. Part of it is that the man she claims assaulted her won't face repercussions. McCullough retired at the end of June while still under investigation. Also, she's still waiting on word from the EEOC, which handles appeals of complaints in federal workplaces and could make Veterans Affairs pay her damages. She filed her first complaint two and a half years ago, but an administrative law judge threw it out on technicalities, saying it wasn't filed in a timely manner and she wasn't a VA employee when most of her allegations happened. Jackson appealed, had her appeal rejected, then appealed again arguing that the private security company she worked for contracted with the VA, essentially placing her under the authority of the VA's police department. I was a, a VA employee. If, if I wasn't, then I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have had a VA employee ID. When her appeal reached a year old this month, she sent this letter to the EEOC saying, I am the victim. I just want impartial justice and equitable relief. Please help. She got this back explaining the process and saying the appeal is being processed in a fair and equitable manner. The litigation process is very stressful for clients, um, particularly those that have been sexually harassed and traumatized in that way. Atlanta employment attorney Amanda Farahani isn't representing Jackson, but she's helped hundreds of women with similar cases. Well, the problem is that the federal EEOC and the EEOC in particular, um, they take a long time to get through the process. They are underfunded. Um, um, not enough people, and with the things that happened during COVID are even more backed up than they were before. But there's a lot more to the case of a reportedly dysfunctional Atlanta VA Police Department. There are other complaints still pending, and the VA hasn't finished its own internal investigation that has the police chief, Beverly Banks, suspended. I am to the point, I don't want to hire black women no more. I'm to that point. I don't have no Hispanic women. Hell, I don't want them me. Because you know what comes with it? A whole lot of attitude, and I don't want it. That's Chief Banks, caught on tape during a 2023 command staff meeting and a recording provided to the Fox 5 I team by an officer who attended. The chief lost her badge and gun in May, with the VA bringing in a national team to investigate the department's troubled culture. Retired VA police officer David Bennett still has his own EEOC complaint pending, accusing Banks of disclosing confidential information about him during a morning meeting. He says with the VA investigation still going, no one knows if Banks might be back. So it's kind of like a, uh, I wouldn't say as much as a hostile talking about him as it used to be, but it's still a, a, a situation that we'll wait to see what's going to happen next. 
The attorney, Farahani, also told us Jackson is doing everything she should, bringing attention to her case and hoping the government moves faster. We wanted someone with EEOC to speak to us for the story, but we got only a short reply. We cannot comment on a pending appeal. We also tried, but got no response from former Deputy Chief McCuller. During the VA investigation, he denied every one of Jackson's claims. Johnny Edwards, Fox 5 News.